changing. I really had the feeling. I just knew that this is crisis. And I, I just knew in the spirit something shifted. And probably the only other time I had that feeling was 2008. You know, it wasn't in the natural, but I just knew, I just knew it shifted. And so I had just this excitement bubbling up in me and, you know, things were opening up now. I mean, it was totally the opposite in the, in the natural, but I just knew it's going to open. Then um, Herman pays me um, a visit on Wednesday and he says that he had a dream about me and he dreamt that dream twice. And in the dream, you know, um, a flock of birds, and I was one of the flock of birds, but someone painted me a different color so that I was looking. I was like the other birds, but I was looking like I didn't belong to the other birds, and then the other birds pecked me to death. It's not a very nice dream. So, I'm not laughing. (laughs) So, what's the interpretation of that dream? Um, I think Herman had the interpretation as well. Is someone is trying to make me look like as if I don't belong, and you know, be be alien, and therefore all that opposition comes. And I thought, you know. With the bishop labeling me as a Toronto blessing Pentecostal in the worst possible colors. And he's not talking about Toronto. He's talking about the abuses that he has in his mind of maybe churches that went down a particular way. I don't even know the details of it. But he's labeling me. And he's done that you know, publicly, Queensland Pastors Conferences. He names me and he labels me. And when he labels me Pentecostals, in the Lutheran church, there is almost no worse label. I, I really apologize to any Pentecostals. We really honor them. But it, in our mindsets, you know, that's the worst. So if I get labeled like that, it's like another color is put on me and says, you know, to everyone, to all other Lutherans, he is not one of us. And because he's not one of us, you don't listen and you peck him to death. <laughs> so what's a way of counteracting that? If, if someone just, we need, We need to come out of being contained and quarantined. We need to have a platform where we can show and communicate what we're really like. Because as soon as people actually hear the story and hear what we're like, they say, ah, this is not what I thought it would be. And so, and and with that, I also came back again to, um, you know, Lutheran Renewal, publishing a Lutheran Renewal newsletter and giving shape to that. So... I was delighted. Then guess what Herman preached on on Sunday? Breakthrough. Oh, I knew it. You know, I already had this excitement. You know, in the prayer meeting, Vicky couldn't believe how happy I was. I was full of joy and peace and confidence. and I just felt it. And then Herman comes. Oh, you know, I, I thought I would preach on this, but God's given me a different message. And the message is breakthrough. And as, and as soon as uh, Herman was beginning to preach on breakthrough, um, Vicky actually connected the dots because she felt her spirit quickening as well. And Vicky felt that she was going to do a 40-day fast at the beginning of the year. So most of us were doing just one week. She, uh, she started 1st of January, came out of it, um, I think, on the 9th. And this is what happened on the 40th day of the fast. So this is one day. This is just, just, this is one day. Uh, yeah, this is one day after we met the general bishop. It's exactly on the day that the Queensland bishop shuts down the tent. You know, I get the news of that. On that day, this is what happened. I read to you her words. Monday, the 9th of February, 40th, 40th day of the fast. I was reading and praying 5, 5.30 a.m. And words came out of my mouth that had nothing to do with what I was doing. They were all out before I realized what had happened. I did not move or say anything, just sat. It never happened like that before. And he said, so she speaks unprompted, doesn't think about it beforehand, but these words come out of her mouth. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. 
That's a good word. Uh, three days later, exactly the same experience, uh, reading and praying by the same time. Words come out of the mouth. No control over the words, but just saying it just comes out. And the words are, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. That's another word for breakthrough, I think. It's a shift of season. Um, call unto me. I show you things that you don't know. So, ah, so it's not going to be boring. So, you know, Helen confirmed prophecy, Nadia prophecy, all of that. Um, two weeks later, we have the meeting in Adelaide. So, you now we since we have breakthrough, um, the uh, bish, general bishop is really alerted now. This is a bit more serious than he thought. Queensland bishop is shutting down my tent. And the Queensland bishop didn't even want to give me the... Um, now, when we did the ministry in Mwulumbai, it's Anglican. So the Anglican bishop of Grafton wanted to know from the Queensland bishop whether I'm a pastor of good standing so he w could be relaxed about me doing ministry among the Anglicans. It's just a formality. Um, and the, you know, but he didn't want to really do it. So in the end, general, the general bishop did it for me. So otherwise, that would have been shut down as well. Um, so we are at that meeting... At the assessment panel, there's no case. We chat, we chat. I have hands out prepared, hands out prepared. Um, and, you know, I present my case in a nutshell. And then I say, okay, I've presented to you what I think and what I think the Bible is saying. And I had plenty of Luther quotes as well. So this is my case. If you think it's not Lutheran, you've got to make your case. You can't just sit there and say, oh, it's not Lutheran. You've got to prove it to me. That's just how scholarship works. I like say, so, you know, I, I actually took the statement of, one of the statements on the Lutheran Church of Australia website with the general bishop there, and it says there on the website that the water baptism and the spirit baptism is pretty much the same because... The Holy Spirit is a person, and you cannot get half of the person. So if, if the Holy Spirit comes to you at baptism, you get the full person, and you've got everything the Holy Spirit ever has for you, you've got it already there. Which is, sounds nicely logical, but it's, not, it's not, not quoting a Bible verse, and it's not biblical. And I, I said to them, this is demonstra demonstrably wrong. Because of course the Holy Spirit is a person. Of course you get the Holy Spirit at baptism. You got the full person of the Holy Spirit. But you do not get all of the power that he can give to you at your baptism or even at any one point in your life. Because the Bible says, eagerly desire spiritual gifts. So there, there are periods in life where God releases a new gift to you. And then when you operate in a gift, you operate in a new power. There's healing, there's miracles. So it's nonsense. I didn't say it like that. But, I, but I'm just tired of always being assessed when the, when the case on the other side is just like not holding any water. I, I should, you know, anyway, they saw the point. It's, it's not difficult to see the point. But they saw the point and there was no other case. And so the, this assessment panel is dissolved again. And so I just see what happens. But I said to the bishop... And he thought, oh, this sounds a bit ominous. Uh, I said to him, look, after we meet with the assessment panel, give me another 30 minutes. Give me another half hour, and I want to share with you what we intend to do to fight this. Step up. And, you know, so he, he gives me that half an hour, and I, I said to him, look, we're not going to accuse anyone. We're not going... You know, we're not getting into ugly fights, whatever. But I said, look, how would you feel if we reconnect with the past and relaunch Lutheran Renewal? National Renewal Movement, National Newsletter, Conference, maybe a prayer network, website, Facebook. You know, just give shape to people that get excited about renewal and the Holy Spirit. And so how would you feel about that? Would he want to stop that? That's what I asked him. And he said, why would I want to stop that? Yeah, indeed, why? <laughs> well, and then he talked positively about 
He actually wants a renewal movement in the church. He doesn't want a hostile, you know, holiness club and hostile against everyone. But he wants renewal in the church. And then I asked him, do I need permission for publishing the newsletter? And he didn't say I needed permission. So I'm not quoting, I'm not over quoting him. So because I don't want to get him into trouble. But, you know, there was favor from the general bishop. And he said, how did he put it? He said, I would need to trust you. And I, I think he actually trusts me. And then he said to me, you're a bit unusual. You know, you're... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What he said is like, you're highly intellectual. You never... I know that you're never going to do anything that you haven't thought through. But at the same time, you're open to all these experiences. That's just a bit of an unusual match. So, in other words, I thought he was telling me that he trusts me that I wouldn't be a loose cannon. And that if, if we're heading up Lutheran Renewal, it's not going to be a loose cannon in the church, but that we're committed to bless the church. And so, ah, oh, that's breakthrough. That's an open door. That is incredible. I mean, ah, oh, this is, this is uh, amazing. Now, okay. So we may start um, Lutheran Renewal. But you know it's going to involve all of us. I mean, you're aware of this. If we step into that, we, you know, in Wollenbar, we already had a team up there, and we minister as a team. And then the Anglican minister, he didn't call me to go back there. He called Helen. You know, need support with prayer. Then he called uh, Barry and Mandy, the worship team. You know, We'll be traveling, we'll be out there, and, but it's going to be fun. Um, I, I finish with this. So if you start Lutheran Renewal, I got one project for you, for us. And, you know, I've written one book. It's, the, the other one is just they're doing the layout, so it, it should come. <laughs> it's a bit slow, but it's, it's going to come. And the two books that I've written, they tell our story, and they're also explaining the change in thinking, the paradigm shifts, that, you know, the correction that we went under to actually believe the Bible again and everything that's in there. Now, those two books, I think the next book you write. And the idea would be, I'm, I'm a, you know, write the opening chapter, setting the scene. I think the next book is going to contain our testimonies, your testimonies. So... Um, a testimony, a chapter. So we have one, a chapter for Helen, a chapter for Tanya, just different ones of us. And the idea of it is that, you know, my two books, you know, with lots of theology, but then you tell your own story and the changes that you went through and how hard it was and, you know, how confusing maybe the journey's even been, the heartache along the way, you know, we had breakaway and just real life stories, but it's a story of hope because, you know, traditional Lutherans, traditional people, suddenly a few years down the track, we are different and it is possible. And it's real and it communicates to everyone. It's not just, you know, a renegade pastor saying it, whatever. It's just the whole church, the whole community is carrying it. And as we write up the stories, I believe it's going to help other congregations just to pick up on that and um, be encouraged and be changed. So this is a project, another one we do. Okay, I, maybe just one, two Bible verses. Second Corinthians 2, God also helps, uh, helps us spread the knowledge about Christ everywhere. And this knowledge is like the smell of perfume. No one really has what it takes to do this work. So, you know, if we're saying yes to this all, yeah, we haven't got it what it takes, but God has. And if God says, I give you this call, he'll give us the power to do so. And it's, amen, amen, amen. So, how do you feel? Shall we have a show of hands? Should we launch, relaunch Lutheran Renewal? Amen. 
Does, does anyone really have it totally on their heart that they have to say a word of warning or caution? I'm going to give an opportunity as well. So from what I've seen, I haven't got my glasses on. It was pretty... <laughs> Was, was pretty unanimous. Yes? Um, we've got an open heaven. An open heaven. Um, I actually see um, a huge opening, and it's just glory for life. And there's angels encircling it, and they're all looking down. And Jesus is saying, that's my church. Yeah, that's my church. That's my church. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I have no hesitation. I know this is where we're meant to go. And I'm excited about it. Because it took long enough to get there. Um, but I like to be out, hey, out of the box. Um, Mark, you pray. Maybe just three of us. Gary, maybe as well, please. please. And Tatiana, you want to pray too? Please. We pray and then we have a little bit of a party. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we can't put you in a box. You, you show, well, we are l so looking forward to you showing us things that we have never seen before. Father, we pray for your renewal. We pray for just your total blessing over the Lutheran Church. And Father, we just step in by faith to the things that you want to show us, Lord. We just take that step forward and we just ask you to fill us with everything that you have for us. We do nothing by ourselves. We do everything through you, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you for for allowing us to be a part of what you want to do. Yeah. We are so privileged to be your sons and daughters of, of you, Lord, and we just thank you for your Holy Spirit and everything that you have given us and are going to give us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We just humble ourselves before you and we just lay down at the foot of the cross and we just lay everything down, all our insecurities, everything that we have, everything, Lord. We just lay it at the foot of the cross and we ask you to just come and bless us, come and fill us, Lord. We just give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord, Heavenly Father. Father, we do give you thanks, Father. And Father, just how you love us abundantly, Father. And Father, we just give you thanks for that love. And but Father, too, as we step out, Father, we will be nervous, Father. And we just ask, Lord, that you just shape us, Father, and you be right there, Father, that Christ puts his hand upon our shoulders, Father. And Father, we'll come across these things that scare us at times, Father. And, Father, we will be shaken to our knees. And in those moments, Father, we just ask, Lord, that you step in, you reassure us. And, Father, as a worshipping family, Father, we can come to each other and, and back each other, Father. And Father, we can do so under your name and under your banner, Father. And, and Father, those things that come against us, Father, we ask, Lord, that we stand as a family. Father, you guard our hearts and our minds, Father. And Father, as those things come against us and want to whisper in our ear and try and condemn who we are, Father, we can turn to you at these times, Father. Even in our absolute down times, Father, we can turn to you, Father. And you will give us great spiritual food, Father, and you will bring us to your table and you will show us all the wonderful things that you have prepared for us, Father. And Father, out of that nourishment we can stand. And Father, under the blood of Christ, Father, Father, you've called us. And you shape us, Father. We ask, Lord, that you continue to do this, Father, to your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you're using us for this task. We thank you that um, you have equipped us over these years, that you've built that unity and the love into us. And, Lord, we ask you that you would guard it, guard the love that we have between us and let it spread out to others and let it touch others. We ask you that you would anoint us this morning, Lord, as you equip us for this task. And we may be weakened, uh, but, but if we are weak and if we are small, Lord, you can be strong in us. And so we ask you that you would be strong in us, that you would um, place your wisdom in us um, as we're dealing with people, as we're dealing with opposition, that we would respond with love. Lord, I ask you that you would anoint um, the people that are going out, our entire congregation, and that we can spread what you have given us. Lord, we thank you so much for that, and we ask you that. Um, you would place your angels around us, that you would guard us, and that you would guard our hearts in your name. Amen. Lord, I, I do thank you for this day. And Lord, it is a momentous day, and we thank you that we can live it and that we can be here and witness it. Lord, this uh, the birthday of Lutheran renewal. 
And Lord, I, I pray a blessing on it. I pray a blessing on us as a congregation carrying it and giving leadership to it, certainly in these uh, opening stages, st giving strong leadership. I pray that it will be received well. I pray that we will see the fire go everywhere. We, I, I pray that Lutheran Renewal is a vehicle that brings renewal to a lot of traditional Christians. I pray that it will go all over the place, all over this nation, that there are open doors into New Zealand and then Lutherans into PNG, in Indonesia, in uh, USA, in, uh, in Europe, in Germany, in Finland. Lord, all these places, there are 80 plus millions uh, Lutherans and a lot of them are dry and a lot of them don't even know the things of the Spirit, have never even heard about it. Lord, that's a big field, a big harvest field. And Lord, then there are others that we minister to and Lord, all around us. Lord, we pray a blessing on it. And Lord, you said, call unto me and you will give us things. And then you show us things that we haven't seen before. Lord, supernaturally, we know you can do anything. And you can give us the resources. You can give us the people. You can give us the open doors. You can just, every step of the way, Lord, you can show us which way we need to go. And you can take us, our church, and we're not a huge church. You can take us by the hand. And Lord, we will be fruitful. And Lord, we thank you that this is the time now. This is a time of breakthrough. This is a time of open doors. This is the time of bringing in a harvest. And Lord, we're calling it in. And we're taking you by your word. And we're putting our faith and trust in you. And we declare that you spoke the words to us. We heard them. We perceived them. And we step out accordingly, trusting that this is the time now. And Lord, any opp opposition anything demonic that wants to rise up, anything that wants to paint me with different colors or even paint the church with different colors. Lord, we stop it now. We stop it now in your name. We come against all the demonic forces, the powers and principalities against this church and we take authority over it and we break it, Jesus. We break it, Jesus, in your name. And there's breakthrough. There's breakthrough. Your word goes out, Lord. And it's taking root, Lord. And there's renewal and joy in place after place after place, Lord. And you're giving us the strategy for it. Lord, in your mighty name, we see that harvest come. Amen. 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 It's time for Amy to come forward. I've been out in the foyer. Did you say yes? Yes. <laughs> Let's just say Edgar will be relieved uh, because <laughs> we've actually uh, thought we'd have a bit of a time of celebration as a congregation, um, starting something new. So uh, we do have a cake and I'd love Edgar and Tatiana to cut it if that's okay. And while they're cutting the cake, um, Carl, can you? There, we're going to bring in some champagne, non-alcoholic champagne, but we're going to bring in some champagne. We're going to have a toast to the start of Lutheran Renewal in typical Lutheran style. And... Um, <laughs> And just celebrate the start of uh, a new journey that God's going to take us on. So if Eddie and Tatiana would like to come and Coatsy's going to take a photo too, I think. No? Uh, we won't tip it. <laughs> but do you want to say what, what's on it? It's Lutheran, Ren oh, you'll see it. Lutheran Renewal. 29th of March 2015, you got the dove there and you got the fire there. So. Looks great. Okay, and. Uh. <laughs> hey. So you. Uh, you, you, you want to do it?
are we going? Has everybody nearly got a glass? Yeah? Can I ask you all to be upstanding? We just want to say thank you to God for breakthrough. Thank you. Thank you to God for breakthrough. <laughs> breakthrough. <laughs> Woo! And we just say, good job. <laughs> we, just, we just say, God, we go ahead in your power, in your wisdom, in your leading. We just thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for what you have done here and for this new and exciting journey. So, yeah, one more time to our God. <laughs> Would you like to join with us? We, Vicky said she's had for the last hour and a half, these are the days of Elijah, like just going in ahead. And so we've got that one if um, our wonderful sound people would mind finding that for us. We can all join in it. No pressure, Bretto. Is it actually on that computer? Okay. Thanks, Toya. Garments of praise. Happy day. Pain finally will cease. Celebrate Jesus. 